Ham Beanie fans and welcome to another episode of the Shite and Sarcasm Engineering Show, also known as a masterclass in reaming with a little bit of innuendo and lots of lewd comments. We better move on just in case some chick phones the police again. Anyway, I've got some new gear. So to keep up with the likes of GCN, Trace Velo, Francis Cade and all that, I have some Chinese gear. Now, it's not that sort of gear. We've got this. These are some titanium, titanium handlebars that were purchased anonymously from a company called Cumplay. Yes, that is their name. I'm not making that up. They are quite famous for making titanium Brompton bicycles. Whether they are the real deal or knockoffs or not, I don't really give a shit, but I'm just pointing that out. Anyway, so these were bought well, by a viewer, actually, so I've got them. And today, we're going to see if they are the real deal or shit. And for the weight, it's about 330 grams. The size, um, they're 42 centre to centre. Right, for the width, you've got 24, 25 mil, so it's basically nominally one inch that's probably been machined down or drawn down. And then through the middle, it's the usual 31.8, that comes out at 32 um, millimeters for the clamp. Or through the middle, 21.4 millimeters, so it's probably just a bit bigger than that. But you've got roughly there just over a mil of wall thickness. Now the issue with making any handlebars is usually the geometry and making sure that things are square. And if you took a look at these, um, they're essentially mandrel bent from tube. Uh, I think this has been made in sequence. So the center has been flared and it looks like the clamping points are here and here. And then um, it gives you the larger diameter. Then the other two halves of the handlebars have been cumulatively bent. The cumulative bend is quite apparent on this part of the bar. So you can see one bend there and then another radius there. I don't believe that's deliberately been put in there just uh, as like a finger hold. Geometrically, I'm not sure if these handlebars are good or not. There is a slight discrepancy between the end point. So here and here, um, the left side is about two mil down and slightly to the left than the one on the right. Now in riding, you, you can't really tell, um, but I'm not sure if that's any good or not because I've never really measured any others before. Now, there aren't any tolerances that I could find or know of for bending tube. Now, if you think that tolerance is good or not, then please do comment below if you're a pipe bender or plumber or something like that then uh, you know, use the comment below. And one of the problems with titanium is you've got work hardening and also the probability of spring back. So after you bend it, it doesn't actually stay put. It springs back a certain amount. And I think that's probably one of the issues that you get with handlebars. The next bit you're about to see is courtesy of my friend Metal Mickey, who allowed me to use his rather large press that he's got from 1950 something without the need for a 20 page risk assessment. So here we go.
Well, it wouldn't quite be a Hambini video without PowerPoint, would it? We'd better check that freaking pen is working. The pen is working. And so it should. Right. Come play shite name, but actually it's a very good handlebar. I was very, very impressed with this, as was Metal Mickey. Um, by Hambini, aged five. A bit of a shill here, really. If you are into all this kind of stuff, remember to hit like and subscribe. And if you're feeling dapper, then uh, you can hit me up on Patreon. This is the Come Play website. So firstly, I need to say thank you to the individual who sent those handlebars in. He wanted to check that they were good or not, uh, and they turned out to be, I would say, very good. Um, this is the website. I mean, you can watch all of this lot. I mean, it, the music on it is flipping out the 50s or whatever. Um, and the, I don't know, the, the picture quality is worse than some of mine, but um, yeah, you can look through that and then come play TI bicycles, all that kind of stuff. These are the handlebars in question. So it's $180 and you can actually customize them to a few different angles and things of, of whatever you need. So you can get 400 mil, 420 and I anticipate uh, smaller than that because they've quoted 31.8 and 25.4. Um, so you can get all of that and they've got all these other things, handlebars that you can get. This is a chart. Um, normally you would see for strength things like a, a Young's modulus. So, um, stress versus strain kind of graph. I didn't have that. So Metal Mickey sorted me out with <laughs> some data that might be slightly ropey. So don't take this as gospel. Um, there's the orange line, which is the aluminium handlebar, which is the brand I've completely forgotten. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a well-known brand. Um, blue one is the Complay TI handlebar. Now, the stiffness in this case, I mean, it's not a perfect test because um, we've put it in as a V. And normally, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that, um, but it's kind of a, a strength test in any case. The so you, you've got you know that limitation there. On this side, you'd normally have stress, but I've got the pressure gauge reading, um, and then on here, I've got deflection, which is just how much it's moved by in millimeters. The, the initial thing you can see is the TI handlebar is extremely stiff. It's much stiffer than the aluminium one, and this kind of area around here is what I would call the mechanical wind-up area. So when you put your weight kind of on the handlebars, it, it will deflect slightly. The TI handlebar has very little deflection, very, very, very small. Um, whereas the aluminium one deflects quite a lot. Once you get to that point, so around here, let's say, the aluminium handlebar, as you apply load, it's just basically, it's, it's compressing. Um, like almost like a spring um, and then there's not really much in the way okay there's a slight increase in pressure um, but then when it gets to this point it's it's mechanically deformed so it's 16 mil the um, TI handlebar is extremely stiff so when you get to this point here it's it's not mechanically deformed it's elastically deformed I'm not I think this is to do with the geometry so normally you just do like a, a, a necked sample, but because we've got the whole handlebar here, you get some of these sort of discontinuities like round here, which I think is where you've got to a point where some stress in the part of the handlebar has been exceeded and then it goes to the next weakest point. And that's what I think has happened. I mean, this is not exactly science, but it gives you a, a kind of indication. When, get it, when it gets to here, then it's mechanically deformed. And then you've got the, the drop in pressure there with an increase in deflection. It's kind of highlighted here. So this is the aluminium handlebar. So this is where the thing's just touching. And this is where it's come down quite a lot. I mean, you can see the difference there. If you watch and have a look there, it's compressed quite considerably um, and that's because it's it's not geometrically as stiff I don't think um, I mean there is a combination of the material in there but the the TI handlebar oops the TI handlebar this is where it's um, you know just got a little bit of load on it and that's where it's like properly coming down um, 
I mean, the, the deflection difference is like night and day. It's just huge. There's hardly anything in there, whereas the aluminium was, was loads. And this is a comparison between the three shots. So you've got the shot of uh, no load, which is here, loaded here, so you can see that's all compressed, whereas this one hasn't. And the titanium one, which has load applied, so you can see the deformation. So it's a local skin um, buckling that you would call that. And it's, I mean, the, the thing's just still intact. Even today, that is still very, very strong. Um, I mean, I, I couldn't, I honestly didn't expect it to be as good as that. And you know, Metal Mickey and a few other guys there, they, uh, they were pleasantly surprised. I was just taking bets on how quick it was going to snap, and it just didn't. So, you know, well done to them for that. So overall, it's a short video today, um, it is extremely strong and stiff. It is heavy, um, so it's 320 grams, and I think that was a 42 centimetre. Um, the only other negative I was going to say is, I don't know about the 2 millimetre out of square. I don't know if that's acceptable or not. The more I've spoken to people, they think that's you know perfectly reasonable, um, but be keen to know what people think, especially if you're bike mechanic or well into your bikes. And I wouldn't say it's particularly expensive. So it was $180, and um, uh, the, the postage wasn't that much either. Um, obviously, the, the viewer that um, sent it in, you know, thanks to them for sending it in, but it, I mean, some might say it's a Hambini special. I'd argue, how do you make a Hambini special handlebar? But there you go. I think overall that the strength in this is, I mean, partly the material, but the other thing is the the way this has been bent or mandrel formed. Um, so those two radii, I have a feeling, I mean, I'm not an expert in bending. I'm not a bender. Well, what's the world coming to? Um, that, that adds to the strength. Um, and that is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did remember to smash that like button if you didn't go screw yourself and as always keep banging your hairdresser